Hi, good morning, happy Tuesday. I am Sarah Smith, I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. I am filling in for the lovely Suzanne Hetrick. Uh, she's away on vacation right now, hopefully having a fantastic time. Uh, usually you see me on Thursdays talking about the plant of the week. Uh, lately it's been all about hummingbirds because we are in the deep of hummingbird summer right now, uh, which is really awesome. The hummingbird activity here is just crazy. Uh, we start bringing in uh, tons of extra hummingbird uh, friendly plants. We group them all together and the hummingbirds definitely get the memo. <laughs> they are busy and active and all over the place right now, which is super amazing. Uh, so usually I'm talking to you about the plant of the week, which has all been about hummingbird summers. Um, but on Tuesdays, we're always talking to you about a different topic about what's going on in the garden. It's about how to trim something, uh, how to fertilize something, how to mulch. Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about how to be water wise and how to really make sure that you're using your water right in your garden. Um, the beautiful part about this is that the tips that I'm going to give you also mean your plants are going to be healthier. So here at Rogers, we're always giving this advice away all the time. No matter where we are in the season, no matter how much water we have available at our fingertips, if you're doing it right, you're conserving water, but your plants are going to be healthier plants than, than plants that get overwatered or watered incorrectly. So it is 100% all about the soil. It's all about what is going on underneath the ground that you don't see that's going to make your plants happier. So what we're gonna talk about first is how to actually water really well in your garden. So what you all should be doing hopefully is taking a look at your sprinkler timers if you have timers and you have your irrigation um, on a set timer. Uh, there are smart timers available. A lot of cities right now are doing a really kind of cool thing where they'll uh, give you some money and reimburse you. You have to check with your city and where uh, you are to see if they'll give you money. Sometimes they will give you rebates for putting in a smart timer. The beautiful part about the smart timer is you kind of get to set it and forget it to a degree. Uh, it's actually taking into account uh, what the humidity is like, uh, where you live, the zone that you live in, if we're gonna get rain, all that kind of stuff, and it adjusts automatically. You still have to occasionally check it to make sure that it's running correctly, uh, but it's a really kind of cool thing. If you don't have a timer like that, uh, and you can't afford to invest in one, your city's not doing rebates, uh, make sure you understand how your timer works. So often people come in, and I'm always asking them the 20 questions when they're telling me problems that they have in the garden, and I always ask them, how often are you watering? And such a common answer that I get, and I think it's a default on a lot of sprinklers, is I'm watering for three minutes every single day. I don't know where that came from. No garden wants that. Nothing wants to be constantly wet on the top and not wet underneath. And that's exactly the environment you're creating if you're watering like that. The key for all gardens is to water deeply but infrequently. That's gonna make your plants so much happier and so much healthier, and that means you're going to use less water as well. So it's a super win-win situation. So you wanna water very deeply. You want the roots to be searching down low for water, and the way you accomplish that is by watering very deeply, but watering infrequently. So you're gonna water till you get, uh, you know, the couple, like maybe a foot or two down into the soil wet, and then you're gonna let the top of the surface dry off. Uh, so you're gonna wait a couple of days before you water again. So uh, like in my garden right now, I'm only watering once or twice a week. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty low about my water usage. Um, so I'm watering all of my plants very, very deeply. I'm cutting it for quite a few days, sometimes all the way up to seven days, depending on what the weather is like. The, they keep saying we're getting warmer, but you can tell we're actually kind of on the cooler side still. Uh, so you wanna accomplish that. Uh, you also wanna pay attention to how the water's actually applied to your garden. If you have pop-up sprays, um, what is happening with that is if you're watering a whole lot higher, a lot of the water is evaporating before it even gets into the ground. Uh, so when you have pop-up sprays, they're emitting a big fine mist, so they're losing a lot of water through just actually uh, being taken up into the environment without actually going into the ground. Um, and you're watering up really high, so you're actually creating a big humidity issue as well. So uh, we have a lot of humidity problems, which actually means uh, we have a lot of things like mildew issues and stuff like that the closer we are to the beach. So that's creating a really big humid situation. So what you really would love to be able to do is to actually get the soil wet without getting all the water into the air, right? So uh, switching your heads to a rotating, um, uh, spray head really is super helpful so it's not a fine mist 
but it's little fingers of water that go out. We have those all over here in our garden. Uh, what I actually think is kind of cool is they actually look sort of pretty when they're running, um, but they're not losing so much into the air as uh, it's watering. You're actually getting like fine fingers of water that come out, and that's super simple to do. We're gonna do a video about that too so you can see how to do it, uh, but all you gotta do is pop those heads up, take off the nozzle, put the new nozzle on. Uh, you can find that in pretty much any store that sells any kind of irrigation supplies. So uh, that's a really smart thing to do. Drip is great because you're not getting any water into the air. You're actually getting all the water directly into the soil. So having drip irrigation is really fantastic. Um, I use um, a lot of soaker hoses. So I don't even run my regular sprinkler system anymore. It probably honestly doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> I do everything by hand watering and I use soaker hoses. There's a lot of different kinds of soaker hoses. We sell these here. Uh, this is a material type. I have both and actually, I don't really have a preference from one or the other, honestly. Um, they have also two of these tube type ones like that and then I mulch over these. Uh, so that way all of the water is going directly into the soil and I'm actually not losing any water. So these are really fantastic. Um, mulching your soil is really, really important. Keeping your soil healthy just in general is gonna make your plants healthier. The stronger your plants are, the less water stress they'll have, even if you start cutting down the amount of water you give them because they're established. Uh, they have really nice roots. They're really established and healthy, so they can actually handle less water. Uh, so a lot of people are giving them way more water than they need, so water deeply. Um, but making sure your soil is really healthy. So adding in things like compost. Uh, when you add compost into your soil, you're adding nutrients to your soil. I love the Malibu compost. It's my all-time favorite. You don't need very much of it, but this really increases the amount of water that your soil actually holds. So a lot of us around here have either really clay soil or we have really sandy soil. This works well for both things. So if you have really clay soil that holds onto a lot of water, but the water doesn't get deep enough, which is definitely a problem, uh, it also holds a lot of sand, or sorry, a lot of salt too, which is a big problem. So um, when you add something like this, it helps break it up. It lets the water get deeper into the soil. It holds the water in a better way than clay soil does. If you have very sandy, silty soil, uh, this really helps uh, make it so you don't have to water so often. Uh, so your soil is well draining, uh, but actually holds a lot of moisture in the correct way that you want your water uh, to be held in the soil. Uh, mulching, mulching is absolutely huge. So this actually helps the soil hold on to more water. Also too, lots of nutrients. Your plants will be thrilled uh, because there's all kinds of great things in here, worm castings and uh, there's uh, steer manure and all kinds of fantastic things in here. Biodynamic farm, which is really cool. Local farm, which is really cool. Uh, so we love our Malibu, um, but mulching. Mulching is really huge. So I have bags of mulch down here. Uh, shredded redwood and I have the um, uh, cedar as well. Uh, what's really great about this is when you're adding a layer of mulch to the soil, you're doing tons of different things. One, you're suppressing weeds. Yay, everybody loves that, right? <laughs> the second thing is it looks pretty. It's so much nicer to see bark instead of just seeing dirt. Uh, so it actually looks nice, makes your garden look really, really nice and finished, but it helps keep your soil moist it helps keep your soil cool when we get hot. It helps keep your soil uh, warm when we get too cold. Uh, so it's like an insulating layer, which is really fantastic and it looks nice. So this really, 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 really help. If you haven't mulched before, it's definitely time to do so. Uh, and you'll really find that it makes the whole garden just happier and healthier. It will slowly break down, adding organic uh, nutrients into the soil again, which makes your water uh, stay in your soil in the a correct way and gives the plants nutrients. So again, it's all kind of a win-win situation. Um, if you are watering with a hose, make sure that your hose is not leaking. So check for all those leaks and definitely having a nozzle on the end. Having just a loose open hose on the end is not a great thing because you're gonna be losing a lot of water. So if you're watering some pots and you're going from plant to plant to plant and you have your hose just running and you don't have a nozzle on the end, you're losing water between each pot. So it all adds up, right? So having something like a really nice nozzle on the end that has a shut off, so that way when you're moving from one area to the other, you're not just wasting water all over the concrete or all over the place and it's just all running down into the gutters, right? So having a nozzle on the end is really, really huge too. So, and this also is just helpful because then you have all different kinds of spray patterns. Uh, it's always good for handling insects and stuff too. I always tell everybody, you know, people will come in and they'll have aphids and stuff all over the plants and I always say, you know, 
hose it down really hard, that will really definitely help knock those bugs off. So having something like that is also very helpful as well. So if you're doing all of these things, you're gonna be saving a ton of water, you're gonna have a really water-wise garden, uh, but your plants are going to be beautiful and happy and just thriving. So it's really kind of a great win-win situation. Hopefully you're doing all these things already because we all give this advice all the time, all day long. If you've ever come into the nursery, uh, these are the things we're always telling you. So if you are checking off all those boxes, you're doing it right and your yard's probably gorgeous. If you're not doing all these things, I guarantee you once you switch over to adding just a couple of these things into your garden, your garden's gonna be super, super happy. Your garden's gonna be super lush looking and it's not gonna create uh, a situation where you're feeling like you have to water all the time. The last thing that I wanna talk about is if you do have lawn, don't feel guilty about it, it's fine. We don't wanna have excessive amounts of lawn, but if you have dogs, if you have kids, and you're actually using your lawn in a great way, and it's not just wasted. Uh, when I see lawns where it's like in between, you know, the street and the sidewalk, what's the point of that? <laughs> we absolutely don't need that, but I have a small amount of lawn because I have a kid and I have a dog. Uh, but what I am doing differently on that right now is I'm not mowing it as short. I'm allowing it to get a lot longer because that way I have to water it a whole lot less. So uh, slowly I have chipped away. I barely have hardly any lawn left, especially when you like plants as much as I do. Uh, you get kind of greedy and you want more garden area, but I have kept a small space for that because we put out a little kitty pool and we do things like that. We actually use it. My daughter will put out blankets uh, and hang out on the lawn. Uh, that's something that I want her to have that uh, small area for that. We have parties and all that kind of thing. So we need a small space like that but I am mowing my lawn a whole lot I'm letting it get a lot longer and not keeping it as short as normal um, one that helps it so I have to water a whole lot less because I obviously can't mulch over my lawn uh, but that helps hold the water in so if you do have a bit of lawn uh, make sure you're letting it uh, get a little bit longer than normal that will definitely help so you will have to cut that water down some uh, but your lawn will still be nice and lush and full uh, which is great and if you have silly strip lawn where it's doing nothing, take that out, put some pretty flowers in, add something that's gonna bring in the hummingbirds and the butterflies. Your garden will be more pretty than just having a simple strip of lawn in a silly spot that you're actually never using in any kind of great way. So uh, like I said, my lawn has gone significantly smaller every single year, uh, but I do keep a small bit of that in there. So if you're doing these things, your garden's gonna look great. You're gonna be saving a ton of water. It's gonna be really, really happy and healthy. And then you're gonna look at it and feel really great about it. And your plants are gonna look fantastic. So if we have any questions, this is live. So you can always put your questions down in there. If you stumbled in this, it's a little bit late uh, or it's no longer live, you can always add your questions down below and we'll answer those for you as well. So we'll take some of those questions now if we have them. Do the water absorbed crystals in pots help? Not really. <laughs> so also too those things are pretty chemical laden. Um, if you're dealing with pots and you have a lot of planted uh, uh, pots outside in your garden those definitely need more water than things that are in the ground because they're above ground uh, and those pots are holding on to a lot of heat. Um, the things that you can do to kind of help with that is mulch on top of that. So adding the crystals and things into that, I would stay away from that. That's gonna hold water in a way that's not super great for the plants. A lot of that stuff is uh, not natural, not organic. Uh, so as the water's coming out the bottom of those pods, it's leaching out all kinds of weird kind of gross stuff. But adding mulch, so even just adding like a layer of the Malibu compost would be great. Uh, doing a layer of Malibu compost and some of the uh, bark, the shredded bark or the chipped bark will help and be really pretty and help save water for sure. So that's the route that I would go uh, for doing a pot. The other thing too, uh, that's a really great idea and I've been slowly incorporating it to all my pots, they all finally have it, is adding pot feet. Uh, if you add pot feet underneath your pot, it's lifting it up off of the concrete. Uh, so it's not sitting on the concrete getting warm for that, but it's allowing it to drain actually better. And it's just better all the way around for your pots. When pots sit in saucers of water, uh, they don't like that. Uh, they're bringing the soil, the like salts and stuff that have come out the bottom and it's absorbing back into the plant. Um, also too, a lot of people think, well, I wanna protect my concrete because I don't wanna create a big ring. Uh, but 
those saucers hold a lot of condensation underneath them and when you move a saucer that has been wet underneath it over and over and over again you still have a big ring so i really have found that the pot feet are the best and they keep your uh, pots a little bit cooler so they don't get so warm so you don't have to water them so often so pot feet adding some compost adding some bark that is your best bet for keeping pots uh, nice and cool uh, and so you don't have to water them so much when we enter into the summer months so you will thank me also go big go big on your pots that's the last thing i'll tell you the bigger the pot the less you have to water it the happier plants gonna be and the easier it is on you so i tell everybody go as big as you can go on your pots because it's so much easier in the long run and you don't have to keep bumping up into bigger pots and wasting money on a bunch of pots spend all your money on a big pot now instead of buying three different pots that you keep you know russian dolling up into a larger one uh, that will definitely help you in the future for sure what color mulch do you carry? So we don't carry any dyed mulches. No dyed mulches, please. <laughs> My neighbor just put down some black dyed mulch and it just looks horrible. Uh, so all of our mulches are natural. I'll lift them up so you can kind of see them. None of them are dyed. Your plants don't want dye. Uh, the water table does not want dye. So let's not do any dyed mulches. Let's all agree together and make this pack, please. Uh, so these ones here is the shredded. So the shredded is really, really nice. Uh, it's really pretty. It's kind of, I don't know if we can really see too much through this bag, but this is the shredded cedar and we have the shredded redwood. Personally, I like the shredded cedar. Um, I think it smells prettier. The cedar does kind of help keep away things like moss and stuff like that, which is where you're gonna get a lot of caterpillar problems from. Um, I don't really, let's see, we'll pop this open just a little bit. So if we open up just a little bit, you can kind of see it's this nice, pretty dark, natural color uh the dyed stuff fades really really strange this is not going to fade like that uh so it's just a nice pretty uh kind of um you know almost hairy kind of mulch so when you put this down what's really nice about this uh as opposed to the chipped mulch the chip mulch is very pretty but what happens is as you water it, it kind of displaces it uh if you have somebody who comes in and uh, they're raking or, or doing any of that kind of stuff or blowing it. It's moving it all over the place. When you water the shredded stuff, it actually kind of almost mats together and creates kind of like a carpeting, which is really kind of cool. So if you've had this, like I put this down every single year, even sometimes every six months or so in my garden, um, I can almost lift the corner of it near plants. It almost pulls up like like a sheet of paper or like carpet. Uh, so the shredded stuff is really, really nice. The chip stuff is really pretty, especially if you have an area that's like maybe a little bit more formal and you have a lot of exposed soil, the chip looks really good. Uh, but this is really your best option um, is this matted stuff because it also helps with the weed suppression even better, uh, which is also a big part of why we put stuff like this down. So um, no dyed, nothing is dyed. Um, and we have the cedar and we have the redwood. This is the redwood, I'll just pop this up real fast. And of course it's like a little bit more I'm not going to open this bag, uh, but you can kind of see it's got a little bit more of a red look, but again, it's not dyed, uh, so it's nice and natural. Do grow bags retain water or is it better to use a clay or plastic pot? So grow bags, I use grow bags, I use pulp pots, uh, I have like a whole assortment. Um, the grow bags are nice because they don't get as hot, which is really great. So I really kind of think that they almost are one thing is holds a little bit more moisture in because of the material which would be like clay pots or glaze pots uh glaze too is going to hold even a little bit more because uh it's not as porous on the outside uh as like a terracotta pot whereas a grow bag uh actually dries out a little bit faster because of what the material is but it doesn't heat up so if you're putting things on concrete uh that's really nice too so i use that for my tomatoes and same with the pulp pots uh, I use those for like my tomatoes and my vegetables and stuff. Um, I don't use it for my stuff that is there year round. Uh, if it's something that's there year round, uh, I want it to be kind of something more permanent and something I don't have to keep changing. Grow bags and pulp pots don't last forever. Uh, so that's why I like using them for my tomatoes and stuff because when I'm done, I just stack up those grow pots and I put them on the side of my garage. Uh, the grow bags, I just fold up and put them in my shed, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, but for my permanent plants that are there all the time, I invest in nice pottery uh, that I don't have to keep changing all the time. So glazed is nice versus uh, more 
you know, terracotta that's a little bit more porous, but honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference uh, having it glazed versus unglazed. Uh, some of the thinner, really, really porous, uh, kind of like Mexican pottery and stuff, that's stuff that's very, um, uh, it's cooked at a lower uh, temperature, but you can feel that stuff. You know those pots that over time, they kind of disintegrate like a piece of chalk? Uh, that is definitely gonna require a whole lot more watering. We don't carry that kind of pottery because it doesn't last very long. Uh, so I would definitely shy away from that kind of stuff. Again, you're having to replace it. Uh, you feel like, oh, I'm saving money because it's cheaper, but in the long run, you wind up buying five of those versus one really nice one that you pay for and you don't have to keep replacing. So I would definitely stay away from those kind of pots, but either way, it just kind of depends on what your use is for it, honestly. Uh, so I would say grow bags and stuff for things that you're going to be changing out frequently, uh, that you're going to be putting up temporarily, uh, but invest in nice pottery in your permanent plants and the stuff you have there permanently. Do you recommend a fertilizer for lawns to promote root growth? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and we, uh, we don't sell any lawn products with the exception of a lawn fertilizer. Uh, the lawn fertilizer, and I, I didn't even think about bringing that, uh, is from Down to Earth. Uh, it's super great. Uh, it is totally organic, um, so you don't have to feel worried about your dogs and your kids and stuff playing on that. Um, I love putting that one down. Uh, it has mycorrhizae in it, and that mycorrhizae, which is super, super important, and I'm so happy that this kind of almost like buzzword thing that came out a while ago is actually uh, really holding on and people are really understanding uh, the importance of it, it actually adds a good uh, fungal root system into the ground and that attaches to the roots of the plants and that allows the plants to have more root space so the plants are taking up more water and they're taking up more nutrients so just in general they're happier and they're more established. The more established your plant is the less you have to water it. Same thing for your lawn. It's kind of funny because I feel like there's so many organic gardeners out there who are uh, using really good quality organic uh, products on their plants uh, and they're mulching and they're doing it right and then when it comes to their lawn they're using some kind of products that they're buying at a big box store and I'm not going to name drop but anything that has a weird color to it you know it's not organic. <laughs> uh, anything that you're buying like that that has all these kind of weird chemicals and stuff in it that suppresses weeds and does all that kind of stuff you know it's probably not great for the environment right and it's going into the water table down below. Uh, so switching over will definitely, definitely help. So mow it a lot longer. So uh, ratchet those mowers up. Ask your gardener if you don't mow your own lawn to grow, to not cut it as short uh, during this really hot season. Um, and then switch over your fertilizer. So yes, we carry a great turf uh, fertilizer from down to earth. It's super fantastic. So we do have that and it's fantastic. What about awesome. succulent gardens? Yeah, I mean, at this point, uh, if you are redoing a garden, it's definitely a really good time to think about what we're putting in there. Um, most plants, honestly, here that are really popular here in Southern California are plants that can survive with low water. The sages, the lantanas, all those beautiful things. If you're establishing them, if those roots are going deep, they don't need as much water. Um, definitely make sure that when you are redoing an area that you're really thinking and being really uh, careful about putting plants together that require the same kind of water. Uh, the worst thing is, is when I see something where you've got a super high water requiring plant and a really low water requiring plant, well, one of those things is gonna be unhappy. <laughs> if you water a lot for the thing that needs a lot of water, your low water plant's probably gonna suffer and vice versa. So making sure that you're hydrozoning, that's the fancy word for it, uh, that you have, if you do have an area where you have some plants that do require a little bit more water, all those plants in that area require more water together and you're watering it a little bit more. And that's what's so cool about smart timers. If you really get into smart timers, each zone will be different and each zone will water differently. You should not be watering your plants, your established plants, for the same amount of time that you're watering your lawn. They do require different amounts of water and different water cycles. So if you're really, really doing it right, different zones will be getting water in different ways. And if you're redoing an area and you wanna do something that's uh, a lot less water requiring, which is 
super great. Uh, succulents work really well. Um, you can definitely do like what we call dry lush gardenings. I think that there's a lot of succulents that really kind of give you that kind of lush vibe and you mix that with some of the low uh, water requiring grasses and a couple of sages and man, it looks fantastic. It looks super, super lush, but it's something you're only probably watering maybe once a week, maybe twice a week when it gets really hot uh, anywhere here in Southern California. Even if you go inland for sure, uh, you can definitely be cutting that water back if you're watering more deeply, uh, but you're definitely getting a less amount of uh, water per, uh, minutes per week, which is really great. So yeah, succulents are a super great opportunity to do something that's kind of cool looking, but definitely requires less water and doesn't require a lot of water to get established. That's the really great part about them as well. How, how close do you mulch or put cedar down okay. from that's a any great, plants? Yeah, that's a great question because what you want to make sure that you're doing, and I'm going to grab this plant right here. When you're putting your mulch down, you only want to do a couple of inches. You don't want to go crazy, crazy thick on your mulch. So, oh, hi, hummingbird. <laughs> uh, you want to make sure that you're not going super, super uh, thick with it. And you want to make sure that you're not piling too much next to the root ball. So I'm going to actually pop this out of the container so you can see what I mean. So when you take a plant out of the pot, right, this is what I'm talking about when I say the root ball. Look how great and established that is. We got the best plants here. <laughs> um, but this is the root ball, right? So when you're planting this, hopefully what you're doing uh, is that you're planting this top of the root ball flush with your soil at home. So there's not going to be any kind of divot down. You're not throwing a bunch of soil on top of this. You don't want to get a whole lot of soil or mulch when it's time to mulch up against the base of the plant that's holding a lot of water like a sponge and it's actually holding moisture up against a part of the plant that it's not used to being wet all the time. So that's huge. So let's say this is a nice established plant in my garden or something I just recently planted. As I'm mulching, I'm mulching thicker, but as I'm getting closer to the root ball, I'm going thinner and thinner and I'm not shoving a bunch of mulch or soil or amendments or anything like that right up against the bottom of the plant. For established plants, it's a little bit easier uh, because they're a little more established. You don't have to worry about it too, too much, but you definitely don't want to smother a brand new planting. Um, and then as you're mulching, you're getting thinner when you go up to the root ball. If you have some kind of like brambly, like beautiful lantana or something like that, you're gonna mulch just up underneath or just a little bit, but the plant itself, because it's a trailing plant, it's actually holding moisture in underneath it too. So uh, it's actually holding down the weeds and all that kind of stuff naturally on its own because it's a trailing plant. So you don't wanna get too close to the bottom. When you're mulching, you only really wanna go like an inch or two. Uh, you don't need to go super crazy thick or anything like that and you definitely don't want to suffocate out uh, on root ball by covering it with too much uh, and holding too much moisture right up against the base of the plant so definitely be careful about that um, and it's always nice to kind of mulch a little bit thinner at first instead of just going too crazy in the beginning and then you can always add here and there as things kind of move and shift around which you'll definitely notice uh, will happen with the mulch for sure and now we got bees. <laughs> so I think we're done with the questions for right now. If you have any other questions, go ahead and still put them down below and we'll answer those for you. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and watching me. We have so many fun things happening here at the nursery. I love that we're in summing, or <laughs> hummingbird summer, uh, which is really a great time. We have so much activity going on here. We have over 40 different hummingbird feeders all over the garden, all kinds of hummingbird uh, plants. Uh, the hummingbirds are definitely here. Uh, and active so definitely come in and check that out um, on June 16th we will have the Audubon Society here again we've had them here once already this year uh, but they'll be here again it's the Sea and Sage which is our local chapter here um, when you buy anything we are rounding up uh, the money to donate uh, to them so if you want to do a roundup for that you can do that and we're matching it so it's even better it's not just that they're getting the money that you're rounding up the 50 cents or whatever it is we're actually matching it on top of it uh, so you can feel really great about that small donation uh, gets rounded up from you and matched by us which is really fantastic uh, we're also doing a really great thing where we're recycling all of the pots so if you buy anything in a plastic pot if you buy things in peat pots what we have been experimenting around don't plant them in the peat pots just a little tip uh, that's just so you can throw those right to the recycling uh, and that way they get recycled 
Um, but if you buy anything plastic and you bring it back one gallon or higher, uh, we donate money to the Surfrider Foundation for that too. So you can always bring back all those pots and you can round up for the Audubon Society. You can donate to the Surfrider uh, Foundation by uh, returning those pots to us as well, which is really cool. So make sure you check out our website, sign up for that email list because you get to know about all the fun things we have going on, all the different things that we're doing here, what the next live stream is, all the different events because we have all kinds of fun things here happening at Rogers all the time. So thank you for tuning in. Again, I'm Sarah Smith and be well and be safe and happy gardening everybody. Bye.